Well, my name is Levi Skeen. I'm here to share with you my findings regarding the science curriculum at Corbin High School. We're going to begin with a look at an overview and history of the curriculum that is currently in place. Uh, of course, this is a high school science curriculum and it's implemented with grade 9 through 12. Uh, the basic current curriculum has been in place since the 2008-2009 school year. Uh, which coincides with the latest adoption of science textbooks. Now, the basic curriculum consists of the following required courses. Integrated science, uh, to be taken in the 9th grade year, biology in the 10th grade year, and chemistry typically in the 11th grade year, although some students will uh, take it a little bit earlier as an elective. Uh, each of those classes is taught over a 24-week period, uh, two trimesters, as they are commonly called, made up a 12 weeks piece. Now, during those 24 weeks of instruction, the classes will meet five days a week and will have 70 minutes a day for instruction. Now, during the 2012-2013 school year, there are modifications made uh, to introduce a 12-week biochemistry class for sophomores. Now, this class existed that one year only uh, due to the fact that at the same time the physics components of the integrated science class for freshmen were being replaced with the same biochemistry material. Um, now those physics components that were removed are set to be reintroduced uh, to the juniors in the 2014-2015 school year. Of course that junior class is the same group of freshmen from the 2012-2013 school year and this physics portion will also last 12 weeks to kind of get everybody on the same page. Now, as we look at this together and, and knowing a little bit of the background from the curriculum we're examining, it's important to kind of understand what we're evaluating. There are two main areas that were examined in this evaluation. One was the components of the curriculum, uh, which in essence is what makes up the curriculum, the parts. Uh, the other being the performance of the students who were instructed with the curriculum being evaluated. Uh, now when we look at the components of the curriculum, what we've considered are the following. The structure of that curriculum, uh, the scope and sequence or the course guides within the curriculum, the materials used, and the staff development related to this science curriculum. Now while considering the performance of those students, we looked at data that related to their performance and we examined it. Now let's look at the curriculum as it relates to our student performance in the area of science. Now when examining the performance for the students involved with this curriculum, it's very important to look at the goals for the performance of those students and find out how well those goals are being met or not being met. Now, Corbin, we're a district with a desire to be the best. And that's evidenced by our own mission statement, and as you can see before you, where it says striving to be the best. And you can go to our own web page, and you'll see that right there on the page. Uh, at the high school, um, that is also the desire. There's a great desire to see our students succeed in all areas, and I know that's true in regards to science. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've shared with you the mission statement from Corbin High School is found on its website. And you can see that before you where it says it provides opportunities that will help prepare each student for a successful transition to college, the workplace, and life. However, when we look at the goals for performance as they're related to the science curriculum, there's nothing explicitly stated. And in order for us to get a measure of how students are doing and the success of the curriculum, it's important to have well-defined and testable goals so that we can have something to examine and to really know if those are being met or if they're not being met. This having been said, uh, here's how I went about examining the curriculum. Uh, we examined it based on the following question. Does the current Corbin High School science curriculum address the science standards and skills in such a way that 50% of students perform at or above benchmark on standardized tests in the area of science. Now, the data we looked at to examine this question uh, 
was the ACT test, and the plan, which is produced by ACT, and the biology end of course exams uh, that are given in the state of Kentucky. Now on the ACT, uh, we used as a benchmark the state average score. On the plan, we used the national average score. And for the biology end of course, we looked at number of students or the percent of students uh, who were scoring as proficient or distinguished. So then 50% or more of the students scoring as proficient or distinguished would meet benchmark there. And I think you understand that idea. So let's begin by looking at our data as it relates to the plan test. Now, uh, you have a table in front of you, and as you can see, when looking at the plan data, we had two sets of information that were used. The test from the sophomore class in the fall of 2011, when the plan exam was given, you can see that right here, uh, as well as the tests from the freshman class uh, given to them in the spring of 2013. So a couple different classes, different ages. And as we look at this data, it's evident that based on the plan data, answer our question is yes, 50% or more. Uh, in this case, in both sets of information, we find out more than 50% met our defined benchmark. Uh, so clearly the answer to our question is yes. Now, looking a little more closely at the plan data, we find that in both cases, uh, both the 2011 sophomores and the 2013 freshmen, uh, we find that both the male and the female populations in both areas had average scores that were above the benchmark score as it's related. And you can see that plainly here, the 2011 group average being 17.8 for the nation and all of our scores being higher than that. Uh, again, the 2013 group, the average score for the nation, 17.8, and each of our subgroup scores being higher than that as well as our average as a whole. Uh, this having been said, let's take a moment and look at our ACT data. Now, looking at this ACT data, uh, we again see that we've used two sets of data to examine uh, our performance of students involved with the science curriculum at Corwin High School. Now, the results of the 2013 ACT that were given to the juniors by the state in the spring is one set of data, and you can see that right here. Uh, also, we have the data for the most recent ACT score. It's not necessarily the highest, but the last ACT taken by the students who graduated in the year 2013. Now, as we look at this table, again, we're going to find the answer to the question is, uh, question are 50% or more of the students meeting the benchmark criteria as a definitive yes, as we see 64% and 61% here respectively. Um, so we can see that. We want to look a little closer at the ACT data. And as you notice here, I've given you another couple of sets of, data, sets of data in the two tables. We've looked a little more closely at the juniors from 2013 and the graduates from 2013 here in front of us. And as we look at these in both instances, again, we're looking at the benchmark score, which is the average for the state, and we're looking at the scores on average for each of our groups for the male and the female and in each instance we find both our male and our female subpopulations as well as our school of an average scoring above the benchmark score uh, which would be indicative of the fact that we are in fact meeting those benchmarks as the question would relate. Now let's turn and look at our biology end of course data. Um, and as we look at this biology end of course data, uh, we find there's some good news here. And, and the good news, if you look at it, our, our column right here that's labeled as the benchmark met in percentage, uh, that would indicate for Corbin High School students um, and in each of their individual subgroups. For the far right hand column, we see the percentage of state students in Kentucky that meet the benchmark that we define. That benchmark, of course, being uh, proficient or distinguished. And we see that in each case for the related groups and for the total uh, that our scores are, or I shouldn't say our scores, but our percentage of students meeting benchmark exceeds that of the state. And so we're performing well. However, uh, in light of the question that kind of is being used for our evaluation, we find that the answer to our 
evaluative question is by and large no. Uh, there's only one subgroup in each of these sets of data uh, that met the criteria for benchmark at a rate greater than 50%. Uh, that of course would be our male subgroup from the year 2011-2012. Uh, also, as we look at these subgroups, it's important to note uh, the significantly lower performance of students who receive free and or reduced price meals. And it's something that we need to make note of as we kind of look ahead. And we'll turn our attention now uh, to the component parts of the curriculum. And we'll move right along to that at this time. Now as we turn our attention uh, to these curriculum components, we're going to first consider the structure of the curriculum. And as that was examined, it turned out to be the weakest area of our curriculum components. And that percentage of criteria being met is indicative of that at only 10%. Now, this was a result of the lack of defined and testable goals that were found to be in place. And we would mentioned that earlier when we were considering the evaluation. Um, now, this area and the weakness of it uh, impacted and I would say continues to impact each of the other components as well in an adverse way uh, seeing as each is very much interrelated. Now let's move along to the scope and sequence and the considerations of it. It was found to be much stronger as we found that 70 percent of the criteria uh, were being met in this area. However, I do think it's important to note that the curriculum maps that were in place uh, were a bit older coming from somewhere around the year 2010 as best as the information indicated and this area as has been already mentioned was impacted by the structure of the curriculum as you know the curriculum cannot really be guided uh, in scope and sequence by the achievement or non-achievement of goals uh, that had not been defined let's continue our look at curriculum components uh, by moving we've got a couple more that we want to look at uh, the materials used in this curriculum and the implementation of it were found to be probably the strongest portion of evaluated components at least in the fact that it was demonstrated that the materials were all in place to successfully implement the curriculum that was there uh, the needed supplies were there and they were distributed amongst teachers in a way that students had access to those and so the criteria met is very strongly indicative of that however as we talked about the structure having the materials uh, it was very important but being able to work with the materials is impacted of course by what are our goals how are we able to evaluate our ability to meet those goals or not and then lastly we want to consider the area of staff development. And staff development showed to be a little weaker than the previous two. Um, and of course, that's very closely tied to the evaluation of the curriculum uh, and, and being able to develop staff as it relates to the needs of the curriculum and the goals of that curriculum. Now that we've examined the science curriculum here at Corbin High School that has been in place, well, let's move on to the recommendations that we have for that curriculum. Now, as we consider the recommendations from the evaluation, let's look at them in terms of the long term and the short term items. Now, the short term items are recommendations for the forthcoming year, uh, and the long term items should be considered uh, in subsequent years, following that first year, this year one, I guess we could call it. Uh, we'll start first with the short-term recommendations. First of all, uh, one recommendation is that a committee should be organized uh, to evaluate the curriculum that is in place. Now this is something that should happen regularly, uh, not just pause here. Uh, I don't know where it's done. Ah, mouse has gone crazy. Don't do that to me. 